I almost didn't make a video about this device because to be honest with you, it is quite boring. It is pretty much as close to perfection for my home lab as I can think of. And the thing is, I'm not being paid to say this. I'm not being sponsored by anyone. No one sent me this device. I actually bought this with my own money. And whilst it looks a little bit industrial, as you can see here, which we're gonna get onto shortly, it has two absolutely amazing features which makes it perfect for my needs. See, one of the problems with this device is that it just works. I don't really have much to say about this. Now, there are a couple of things that I could be hypercritical about, and the first one is the barrel jack on the back. I wish it was USB-C because I have another little mini PC here that actually has a much stronger processor but uses USB-C here and I can actually connect it to a Thunderbolt dock. And also the power brick is absolutely massive for this thing. So um, that's probably the two things, but as I said, I'm being hypercritical here. Now you can probably tell that this looks a little bit different to most mini PCs. This is kind of a more traditional mini PC with the USB on the front, kind of a little bit more of a plastic build, a lot more compact, whereas if we take a look at this, obviously we can see it's a little bit bigger. It's got the fins on top. It's got exposed screws everywhere. It's kind of something that looks like it belongs into an industrial warehouse more than kind of in a home lab environment. And one thing that I find really strange is that not many people have reviewed this device because it is a really neat little package and yet I've only seen reviews of this done on some, some of the really, really nerdy YouTube channels. Now, if you're looking to pick one up for yourself, you're most likely going to find it on AliExpress and I'll try and link this exact one down below if you're interested. But I actually managed to come across this on Facebook Marketplace, as I said, and it is exactly the one that I was going to buy anyway and I got it for an absolute bargain as well. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper into the specs of this and this device here has an Intel i3N 305 CPU. It's from I think Q1 of 2023 and unlike all of the kind of N150 or N100 CPUs that get out on the market, this is actually an eight core CPU, whereas all the other ones are four core CPUs. Now for benchmark sake, this CPU performs about as good as an 8500 six core CPU. But the difference between this N305 and the 8500 is the TDP. This has only got a TDP of 15 watts, whereas the 8500 goes up to 65 watts. And yet, as I said, performance wise, these are basically bang on. And keep in mind that the 8500 is still compatible with Windows 11. Now, one of the downsides of these efficiency core only CPUs is the RAM configuration. Whilst an 8500 supports, I think, up to four channels of memory, this supports only one stick of DDR5 memory. Now, officially, it's only 16 gig supported, but I've seen Reddit threads with people using 48 gig sticks without any problems whatsoever. Now, I've mentioned two amazing features that this device has for me personally, and one of them is around the back and the other one is on the inside. But taking a look at the kind of hardware or the rest of the device, we can see on the front, we've got a power button. We've got a couple of USB 3s, even though they're black, it does say super speed USB. We've got a cleared CMOS kind of button reset switch thing. We've got a couple of antenna outs here, as well as a TF card slot, which is essentially just a fancy way of saying micro SD. Um, I think it's just licensing here, but you can use a micro SD for the OS if you so wish. I've got a 64 gig one here. Now, the left-hand side has pretty much nothing. It's just a thin array, and so does the right-hand side. But around the back is why I desperately wanted this. It's got two more USB 3s, it's got a display port, it's got a HDMI, it's obviously got the barrel jack that I mentioned, which I wish was a USB-C, and then we have four Ethernet ports, and they are not just generic Ethernet ports, they are Intel 226V Ethernet ports, which means they are two and a half gig. And as much as they are a mouthful, I absolutely love the fact that it has four Ethernet ports on the back. And the reason I absolutely love the fact that it has four Ethernet ports is because the CPU and the four Ethernet ports allow me to run the right kind of VMs that I want for my home lab. So for example, I could dedicate two ports directly to something called OpenSense, which is the root OS that I run. I could then have a separate port just for TrueNAS itself. And then I could have another port used for kind of Docker containers or any kind of VMs. So every kind of VM and any app that I run in here could have their own separate dedicated port. 
because most of the time, if we take a look at the other mini PC that I've got here, it has two ethernet ports. So if I'm looking to run OpenSense, I'd have to share the management port and for example, the LAN or the WAN port with one of the ports. And then obviously the other one would be the other port. And I couldn't dedicate any separate ports to any VMs or any kind of Docker containers if I wanted to segregate out my VMs and containers. But let's now turn our attention to the second most amazing feature of this little mini PC here. And I've already taken the screws out on the bottom, which is just four to get in nice and easy. Now, this feature is gonna be a little bit more controversial. And let me show you why. If I take the bottom cover off, we are presented with four NVMe slots here. We have four usable, and I'm gonna use the word usable NVMe slots here. Now, this CPU only supports nine PCI lanes, but we have four NVMe's, so you can probably imagine that we don't have all the lanes available to all NVMe drives. And actually what you're looking at here is something called a daughter board, which is essentially an NVMe slot split into four NVMe slots. So if I was to take this out, there's an NVMe slot, which this daughter board slides into, and then it splits the four lanes that this NVMe gets into four individual lanes. So each one of these NVMe's has a single lane. Now, initially, that might sound like a bit of a problem because you're gonna go, well, hold on, you're not getting the full speeds, and I completely agree with you. However, you are gonna be limited by the ethernet ports anyway if you're looking to use this as a NAS. So unless you're looking to spread your OS across all four drives, you are gonna be limited by the two and a half gigs. So I think your max read writes are gonna be at 250 megabytes per second anyway. And this is more than capable of sustaining that. Now the setup I've got here is I've got an NVMe drive here, which is 120 gig, which just runs the operating system. And then I have these three here, which are all one terabyte drives. They are slightly different, but they're all one terabyte drives and they work absolutely fine in TrueNAS. And I've got this set up in a RAID 5. So I've got one as a drive for redundancy and obviously the other two handle data. So I've got two terabytes of kind of usable space here. And what I love, as I mentioned, is just how easy it is to get into this device. I can literally just pop the bottom open and then swap the drives if I need to. So this is what the daughter board looks like. We've got the kind of four NVMEs obviously on top here. And then underneath, we can see that this is kind of a PCI adapter underneath here, goes into the NVMe connector. And also we have four standoffs and then a little bit of power. And if I show you the inside, this is what it looks like. It's got the four standoffs for the daughter board. And then here we also have a 2230E key for Wi-Fi. And this is where I was mentioning the antennas on the front here. And then also obviously we've got the NVMe slot. Now you could just use the NVMe slot if that's what you want. Um, by all means, you could use that, no problems at all. We also have the BIOS a battery or CMOS battery, and then we have our single stick of RAM. And it was so elevated that I actually thought that there was space for a second RAM slot, but unfortunately not. And here is just the single eight gig stick. Now, obviously, in order to get to this, if you wanted to upgrade this, you'd have to take the daughter board out. Now, I don't need to disassemble this any further because to be honest with you, the rest is just the heat sink for the CPU. To solder the CPU, an N305, as I mentioned, eight cores, and it is pretty heavy, and obviously the board is already in there. There's a few more screws that I'd have to take out, but as I said, it doesn't really make much sense because I have to reapply the thermal paste and there's nothing else to see underneath. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is pretty much as close to perfection as you can get for your home lab setup, especially for my needs. Now, the one thing I wish it had was the USB-C port because you could technically run a kind of a fake UPS where you could plug in a power bank, for example, a powerful enough power bank and then charge that power bank constantly. So then when power dies, you've got enough battery to prevent this from just dying on you straight away but that's just a minor gripe and maybe we will see that in the future. Now looking at the BIOS on this, to be honest with you, most of the features are, in my opinion, useless anyway. Most people who will get this will try and get this as power efficient as possible. You can do some tweaking, you can change the power targets, but then the rest of the BIOS is pretty poorly labeled, if I'm gonna be honest with you. You have to really understand what it is that you're doing in the BIOS in order to make any changes. So to be honest with you, I'd 
probably just stay away from making any changes because it runs fine as it is. Now, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning of the video was the operating system that I'm running on this. And I am running TrueNAS when most of you probably would expect me to run something like Proxmox. Now, the reason I'm running TrueNAS is because some of the incredible features they've recently released with version 2504, they've really stepped up the game with the way you can set up and run VMs and containers. You get a lot of images preloaded already on the OS, all the kind of most common ones such as Ubuntu, such as Debian, Linux, Alpine, anything like that, even NixOS comes preloaded. So you don't have to go on the internet and fetch any of the distros, you can literally just select the one you want and there we go, the VM is up and running. You also get GPU pass-through, which I know a lot of people find really difficult, especially myself in Proxmox, whereas here it's already pre-configured for you so you can pass through the GPU and because this has an Intel UHD 770, you can actually pass this through and use it on a Windows VM if you wanted to. Now, obviously you don't have to run TrueNAS. A lot of you in the comments have mentioned uh, Unraid and don't get me wrong, I like Unraid, but I'm just so, so familiar with TrueNAS and it just makes it so easy for me to set things up because I can run my apps, which are just Docker containers and I can run multiple VMs such as OpenSense, for example, or NixOS or anything like that. And as I said, I can assign each of those VMs and apps a dedicated ethernet port as well. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I almost didn't make this video because I got this device, I brought it home, plugged it in, set up TrueNAS and that was it. I've not touched it since. I didn't feel like tweaking anything. I didn't feel like, oh, I wish it had this. Or I wish it had that. It's just been running absolutely fine as a NAS and as my kind of router or OS. And I know this next bit's going to sound controversial, but it's pretty much the same as my M4 Mac Mini, which sits there. It's just a workhorse. It's boring. There's nothing fancy about it. There's no bells and whistles. There's no, I wish it had X. I wish it had Y. It just works. And these two devices are pretty much the staple of my home lab setup. So I can't recommend this device enough. Honestly, it's absolutely brilliant. It's perfect for everything that I do and I highly recommend you check it out. I will have it linked down below in the description if you're interested in finding out more. Also, while you're down there, feel free to leave a like and a comment and subscribe for more upcoming videos. And let me know what types of videos you want me to make.